Welcome to the Egg Whisperer Show, a program exclusively designed to promote reproductive health awareness and discuss fertility preservation options. Here is your host, the Harvard-educated fertility specialist, Dr. Amy. She's known as the Egg Whisperer. Fertility expert Dr. Amy Vazadin. And you have yet another success story just launched by an East Bay fertility doctor. Welcome to the Egg Whisperer Show. Today's episode is on male infertility and aging. And I have a special guest, Dr. Kristen Brogard, on today's show. Hi, Kristen. Hi, how are you, Amy? I'm doing great. Thank you for coming on today. And for our audience, I'd like to start off by sharing your bio. It's very impressive. You have a PhD from Northwestern University in novel epigenetic technologies that allowed for a more accurate understanding of the role of chromatin in the regulation of genes. You then later supported the launch and growth of Aravail, a revolutionary new wellness company that combines cutting edge science, personalized data, and tailored coaching to help clients optimize wellness and avoid disease. And now you're chief operations officer of Path Fertility. So what inspired you to work in fertility? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. Um, you know, my answer really is is twofold. Um, we as a company, my co-founder and I started our company with the mission to use the technology that we have, which can be applied to um, lots of conditions. But the goal was for us to use it um, to reduce the pain and suffering that occurs with trial and error medicine. Um, both my co-founder and I have very close family members who went through really a horrible series of tests, procedures, treatments, um, were very sick, and ultimately we were not able to either diagnose and heal our loved ones. So we um, are very passionate about finding areas where we can help that helplessness that comes with trial and error medicine. Um, and when discussing with uh, friends and family and really digging into some of their experiences, um, fertility and infertility care kept coming up. You know, I, I um, have been part of these uh, my friends' journeys, but really digging into what they experienced, the invasive procedures, the years without a baby, the out of, ex the out of pocket expenses, um, and to ultimately end up with a diagnosis of unexplained infertility really felt um, like an area of trial and error medicine that we could explore. Um, and then secondly, as an entrepreneur, I'm looking, we're looking for areas where our technology can really improve a patient's experience. And when we dug into male infertility specifically, it was abundantly clear that there is a large area of growth where new technology could improve um, treatment plans, couple experiences, couples experiences, reduced uh, time to pregnancy and reduce out of uh, pocket costs. So we really felt like it was an opportunity where our technology could make a difference. Exactly, how can Path Fertility help with all of those things that you just mentioned? What we do is we have, um, we really focus on what's called epigenetics, which um, rather than just looking at the DNA sequence in a cell, um, which is the same DNA sequence that you have in all of your cells, what epigenetics is, is the actual modifications that sit on top of the DNA that tell genes to turn on and off and tell DNA what to do. So you could compare it to like your DNA is the hardware. So you have the same DNA sequence in all of your cells, but it's really the software or the epigenetics or on top of the genetics that make your brain cell become a brain cell or your sperm cell become a sperm cell. And what we found, and with our academic co-founders, um, we really have found an area where sperm-specific epigenetics have been shown to say a lot about one's fertility potential and how they are aging. So um, in our first product, we are, which is a sperm age test, we are analyzing how the epigenetics on the sperm DNA um, represent the aging of the sperm. Because we know that as a man ages, um, there are um, their fertility potential begins to decline. So we can actually provide um, a physician or a couple your true paternal age. 
So rather than just knowing how old you are chronologically by the calendar, we actually can tell you how old your, how old your sperm are, which is an important component when uh, discussing family planning. And I feel like if you were to open up People magazine, you may not know that because a lot of the education people get can be from online resources, magazine articles. I mean, you look at Mick Jagger, for example, who fathered a child at 73. So a lot of us just think it doesn't matter. You're good to go no matter what the age of the guy. So in your opinion, when should couples consider looking at the male side of the equation and when should they do the path fertility test, whether they're having trouble conceiving or not? Yeah, so um, I think the oldest man to have a child has been 96. So uh, that I can definitely understand why um, people would believe that men can just have babies forever. But the reality is men do have biological clocks. Um, they're a little less aggressive and abrupt than a female's biological clock, where when you just have a depleted egg reserve or menopause, um, you really don't have the ability to have kids. But what people don't really look at with men is these older men and aging men, you have increased time to pregnancy, you have lower pregnancy from naturally or artificial insemination, um, decreased IVF success rates, increased miscarriages, increased stillbirths, and also a potential increase in having um, conditions in your offspring. Um, there has been links to cancer risks, psychiatric disorders, metabolic disorders, um, and then behavioral and social function disorders. So there's absolutely a biological clock for men, and it's important that couples consider both the female component and the male component when looking at fertility care. 50% of infertility is due to male factors. Um, and sadly, right now in our medical field, um, most of those procedures are focused on the woman. There's been a lack of um, research and effort on the male side. So um, my suggestion would be if you're struggling to get infertile, or sorry, if you're struggling to have a, a baby um, and you have any concerns, the sooner the better you can reach out to a physician um, is, is the right decision. Time is critical for both the male and the female. So, um, and then for some people it takes a while. So if you are have any concerns, um, it's a, it's and it's both the couple, male and the female, coming to the physician. Or another way to think about it is test, don't guess, just get tested. And then my newest mantra is, it's always nice to have sperm on ice. <laughs> um, it's a lot easier than getting eggs on ice, that's for sure. Um, and then how does the testosterone level play a role in all of this? Yeah. You know, testosterone is so fascinating to me. Um, definitely sexual function decreases as a man ages, um, and that is linked to uh, decreasing in t decreases in testosterone. As a man ages, the actual cells that produce the testosterone, the count of those cells decreases, the total testosterone in the body decreases, and then the actual, um, you know, your, your hormonal organs are are changing and getting older. So there is a decrease as a man ages and um, there is, testosterone replacement therapy is very common now where people um, take testosterone to get back that sexual, sexual function and that absolutely works. You have better erectile function um, and, but what they, what it doesn't do, it actually stops spermatogenesis. So men who are taking testosterone even though they have higher sexual function, the ability to have kids actually decreases. So if you're thinking about going on testosterone as you're aging, um, it is a conversation with your physician, but there are other hormones that you can supplement with testosterone treatment to actually bring that sperm creation back. But testosterone replacement on its own will actually um, increase your fertility concerns. Yeah, it's a great birth control pill, let me tell you. Yes. For men. Um, I love on your site that you describe your test as one part hard science and two parts supportive friend. Can you explain the hard science behind your test and what you're looking at? Absolutely. I, I, I absolutely love the science. This is, this is my background. So um, we have extremely great data and several peer-reviewed publications on looking at the epigenetics of sperm DNA and sperm as men age. So we actually have um, time points of collecting sperm as a man ages. 
And what we found is that your epigenetic signature on your sperm DNA um, decreases. So you actually have less, um, you have less epigenetic signatures as you age. And um, we have it to the point where we can, in most cases, calculate a man's chronological or calendar age by just looking at their sperm DNA. So we have a very, really, very um, robust algorithm to calculate how your DNA epigenetics in your sperm cells relates to your age. But what we found, which is really fascinating, is that um, certain lifestyle characteristics um, and some men have sperm that's actually has accelerated aging. So you can be 36 years old, but have sperm that's more characteristic of a 42 or 45 year old man. And ha having this as the true paternal age, so the actual age you are providing in trying to have a baby um, is an important conversation because it will, um, we know that men who are older have um, a longer time to pregnancy. So it's a conversation to have. Um, we also know that um, this epigenet these epigenetics on sperm DNA can actually be changed in, um, over time. So we know that um, smoking, BMI diet can actually accelerate your sperm age. Um, and we have shown in certain models that with um, removing those types of lifestyles, you can actually bring your sperm, your sperm epigenetics back to normal. Beautiful. And I know that this is a little bit controversial because I don't think there's an agreed upon age in the scientific community, but what, based on your research, what would you call advanced paternal age? At what age would you say, this is the age where you're gonna start seeing, and above this, more difficulty getting pregnant, time to pregnancy, and more complications? Or your advanced paternal age is actually a very multifaceted question. I think you have to bring in factors. You have your chronological age that is important, but also lifestyle, behavior, mental health, uh, current diseases, history of diseases, all comes in and, and plays to what would be considered too old. Um, and, you know, there's, there's hard data about when we know sperm count decreases. Um, in the early 40s, sperm count decreases, um, changes in testosterone start having, happening in the 40s. So um, I don't feel, I don't think there's a right answer for what's advanced. Um, there's definitely data of when things change, but um, it would be a different answer with an extremely healthy person um, versus someone who's chosen less healthier lifestyle habits. And can you explain how is this test actually done? Yeah, so um, it is a kit that's ordered online and it's available um, through our website. We send a kit that has a sperm collection cup in it and instructions and prepaid shipping um, to the purchaser. The, the client collects a uh, semen sample in the cup in the privacy of their own home. And what's really cool about epigenetics is that's stable at um, room temperature. So you can actually put the cup in the box and put it in the package and ship it back to us without having to worry about temperature control. So once shipped back to us, we get it in the lab, we do a sperm count, um, and then we analyze the epigenetics on the DNA. How long would you wait for results to come back? Right now we're at a 10, 10 days. And then how can you reassure someone who might be a little bit nervous, maybe slightly paranoid about putting their sperm in a cup and putting it in the mail? I tell my patients, no one's gonna take your sperm. Trust no me. one's gonna take their no sperm. No one's gonna open up that cup. No one's gonna use your sperm for an insemination. That kind of thought process, just remove it from your thoughts. But literally, how can you reassure people? Well, one, sperm that will be sent at room temperature definitely could not be used for anything procedural. Um, so that is absolutely not the case. We um, send it directly priority to our lab, which is a um, certified lab for doing this type of processing. Um, and then, you know, if there's any concerns about DNA and privacy, we are only looking at the modifications on the DNA. We're not sequencing one's DNA at all. So there's actually no possibility of using it for um, an insemination or to have any privacy concerns because we're not looking at the DNA sequence itself. So you're not selling data to Facebook? No, Facebook. absolutely not. <laughs> and then um, you mentioned something, and this is near and dear to my heart, because I try and help patients create a roadmap for their future family and, and try and create a plan. 
How can your test help people achieve their family size goals? When we receive, you know, fertility is not just one number. So we, and our test alone is not going to tell you if you're infertile or not or what to do. Really, it's the combination of, of the really a 360 degree view of your health and lifestyle and goals that we try to put together in a packet. So in addition to providing a sample, you also provide um, some detailed information about um, your lifestyle, what you want, how many kids do you want, what's your, what are your exercise habits, what are your diet habits, and together, based completely on um, scientific publications, we go through what your lifestyle is, tell, tell you in a nice report where that fits in the current recommendations um, to maximize fertility based on scientific publications. Um, and then additionally, we put where your sperm age is and if you, um, you know, and where your chronological age is and if there's any concerns there, and a lot of times there's not, um, and in the case where you say you want to have three kids and you're 36 years old, we just give the standard recommendations. If you know you want to wait at least 18 months before trying to have a second kid, so you need to start. What is the oldest, absolutely oldest dad you want to be, and then you need to work back from there. So we pro provide some education on that. And how often should someone revisit or redo the test if they've done it once and they're making lifestyle changes? When would be a good time point for them to order it again? Yeah, absolutely. So your, your um, entire uh, sperm restore, gets restored after three months. So spermatogenesis is what, that, that, what that's called. And after three months, you have a totally new supply of sperm. And what we do know is that epigenetics change pretty quickly with lifestyle, beha lifestyle and behavior changes. So we're recommending three months to maximize any changes that we'll see. And then submission of a new sample, what we would do is actually compare it to your, your old sample as well and include that in the report. That's great. I wish I could do something for women. Ship you a cup, put some eggs in a cup, and I can give you this information. Why can't we do it for eggs? Yeah, so there's... Um, one, there's, we don't have the, no one's done that yet. So um, there's no research where we can actually develop the product is, is the really um, logical explanation. But also an egg is much more complex than sperm. Uh, epigenetics are, is very sensitive to cell type and um, different, um, to cell type. And what sperm is wonderful for is that you can get a lot of a single cell type in a sperm sample, in a semen sample. So right now we're not there with eggs, but it's something we absolutely want to move towards. God, I would love for some blood tests better than the FSH, estradiol, AMH, your follicle count, and your age to kind of tell me what's yeah. going on with you. If they're truly- Wouldn't that be great? Like that. It would be great. Um, so where can someone find the test? So if you go to our website called path, P-A-T-H, pathfertility.com, it's purchasable there. And for all the egg whisperer listeners, we actually have a special site of pathfertility.com slash egg whisperer, and you can get a discount um, for listening to this show. And um, we will we will give Amy, uh, Dr. Amy credit for all for all those submissions. Awesome credit, not payment. There's no, no <laughs> sorry, yes. good at all. That is yeah. a very good. Yeah, you guys know that I just bring people on that inspire me and hopefully can inspire you guys to build the healthiest family that you possibly can. Cool. Well, thank you, Kristen. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for sharing all your wisdom and thank you for trying to make lives better for my patients. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Amy, for everything you do for your patients. And if you're interested in learning more about fertility treatments, including IVF, go to eggwhisperschool.com and join me as I teach my next class. Have a great day. Welcome to the Egg Whisperer Show, a program exclusively designed to promote reproductive health awareness and discuss fertility preservation options. Here is your host, the Harvard-educated fertility specialist, Dr. Amy. She's known as the Egg Whisperer. Fertility expert, Dr. Amy Vazadeh. And you have yet another success story just launched by an East Bay fertility doctor. 